Oh yeah, welcome to Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon, he's Johnny North. RingsideReport.net is the website, go there. Check us out online, we got a lot of stuff. If you want some AEW coverage, you want to go to our website, RingsideReport.net. On this show, we will be focusing on the WWE. There's a lot going down in All Elite Wrestling though. We did the preview for AEW Revolution. Big pay-per-view Saturday night from AEW. The preview is up on our website right now. You can also check out our watch-along over at ringsidereport.net. All the info for AEW, what's happening at Revolution. We're watching the pay-per-view live with you on the watch-along at ringsidereport.net. So go check that out right now. There's a lot of stuff going on on the website. You know, not just here on Wrestling Uncensored. If you're listening to us on the radio we have uh, a whole network going on online, Ringside Report MMA, Dave and Johnny Live, and then the watch-alongs for all the big wrestling and UFC events, including this uh, big AEW Revolution show. And we'll be back for another watch-along for the UFC next Saturday, UFC 248. It'll be Adesanya versus Yoel Romero in the main event. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to... WrestleMania or or am I? I don't know. I don't know, Johnny North. Are you looking forward to WrestleMania? We've seen Super Showdown. We've seen what the WWE is laying out over the next couple of months. And we have a new Universal Champion. And that man is William Goldberg, also known as Bill Goldberg. It's a nice surprise. I wasn't expecting this. So it's cool. Goldberg's champion again. Second reign is universal champion. I never expected this to happen, but cool. It's happening. Let's run with it. You're happy about this. Well, it's a nice surprise. I never thought Goldberg would really wrestle in WWE ever again, actually. I thought he was done. I thought, you know, he had his match with the taker and that was kind of bad, but he had a nice comeback match with Ziggler. And I thought that was a nice way to end it actually. But no, he came back and won the championship again. He's the man on SmackDown. Didn't see that one coming. It's a nice surprise. And he's probably going to main event WrestleMania. Wow. And you're very upset. I'm I'm surprised. I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised, and I am surprised. You know, we talked about it last week. We previewed the show. And I said how The Fiend versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania makes the most sense. Yes, it did. It makes a lot of sense. And... It would work, and I think a lot of people would be satisfied with that, and it would be fine. And sure, maybe it's a bit predictable, Roman Reigns conquering the Fiend, but a lot of people felt like he was the one to stop the Fiend. The Fiend, who had a very strong run taking the Universal Championship from Seth Rollins, beating Daniel Bryan in a couple of matches. Yeah, dominantly, too. Like. Yeah. Beat The Miz as well, which, you know, whatever, as Bray Wyatt there. But now, losing to Goldberg, not Roman Reigns. It's Goldberg that's going to put a stop to The Fiend's run here. And, you know, the WWE does stuff like this all the time. I'm not surprised because it seems like a silly move, and the WWE does just ridiculous stuff all the time. So, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed that they went back in this direction. I think that Goldberg, you know, as big of a star as he was in 1999, is not the same guy in 2020. He hit four spears on The Fiend, and then he hit what I guess you could call a jackhammer, but it was, as Jim Ross would say, bowling shoe ugly. It was not a good jackhammer whatsoever you're supposed to lift the guy up in the air hold him there and then drop him down Goldberg looked like he could barely lift him up and then he just dropped him down immediately it looked bad it looked dangerous and he's not a guy that I would want lifting me up in the air upside down because I don't know how I'm gonna land and you know, pro wrestling, you got to be able to trust your opponent. I guess they're going to trust Goldberg, 
but that jackhammer was pretty bad. The match with The Undertaker was pretty bad. There were many moments in that Undertaker match where you thought, ooh, Goldberg nearly killed Undertaker there. You know, a couple times when he dropped him on his head, it could have gone south real quick. And with a guy like Goldberg, who, you know, sure, he looks good for a 53-year-old guy. He's jacked enough, but he obviously doesn't have the strength, the power that he once had, uh, or maybe even enough to be effective in pro wrestling right now. I was not shown anything in that match or have seen anything really in the past couple of years, the past few matches from Goldberg, that makes me believe that he can be an effective top draw right now. Well, you nailed the key point. He's 53 right now, so he's not going to get any better, right, you expect? So if you're going to use Bill Goldberg, now's the time to use it while he still looks good and for the most part can still do most of his moves. He can hit a couple spears. Oh, s slow down here, here, buddy. What do you mean he can do most of his moves? He did, he did the spears. Oh, because he had two moves and he could do 50% of them? Exactly. So, I mean, you make the most of what you can of it now. Come on, Johnny. Are you not disappointed that they gave it to Goldberg, though? Are you not a bit disappointed that they went back to the well one more time? They decided to go with a part-timer, older guy, instead of sticking with their current full-time wrestlers. Like, they made a decision here. Not going to be the Fiend and Roman. We're going to go a different direction because we don't believe in the Fiend versus Roman as a main event for WrestleMania. And I think that is a huge failure on the WWE's part because this is something that you could see building and bubbling for many months and it would make a lot of sense to do that at WrestleMania for Roman to be the guy to take down the Fiend. But instead, it's Bill Goldberg and it's just going back to what they always do and failing to make new stars and let and 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 bring people up you know you're not bringing roman up and you're not really bringing goldberg up by beating the fiend he didn't need a win over the fiend to have a match at wrestlemania but they wanted to put the title on him for one reason or another well we mentioned this last week what looks better on the marquee is it Fiend versus Reigns, or is it Goldberg versus Reigns? And clearly, they believe Goldberg versus Reigns is the best they can do. So they gave us the best they can offer. You don't like that, though. Well, I mean, don't you think that it would be better for them, for the WWE, if they did do Roman versus The Fiend, and they did have Roman as the guy to end his title reign, his reign of terror? I thought that's what they were going to do, but I think they want the dream match more of Spear versus Spear, you know, the past icon versus the current icon. I think that's what they want to do instead. They want to pass the torch in that kind of sense. It's strange. It's forced. It's very forced. forced. Like Goldberg versus Roman. What's the story there? They both do a spear. They play football. It's true. Like they play both play foot football. Like. Yeah. How many pro wrestlers played football? Like, come on. No. That's not a story. Hey, uh, Roman, you played football. Well, I played football better. Professionally, yeah. That's right. Goldberg played in the NFL. Roman did not. So that's something. Yeah, it's something. Goldberg was a little bit better than him. Goldberg does the spear and Roman does too. Uh uh, it sold the, ma the match right okay. there. <laughs> no, it didn't, John. No, it didn't. That's a lie. Stop lying <laughs> to the Wrestling Uncensored universe. I think a lot of people just are saying like, oh, he does a spear. He does a spear. I want to see them wrestle each other. A lot of people are like that. It's like, oh, they have the same finisher. I want to see them wrestle each other. Who's the better man? It's kind of ridiculous, but it's true. It's super ridiculous. But you know it's true. I do. <laughs> but it's dumb. It's uh, it's a hard sell for a big main event WrestleMania match. And the fact that Goldberg has taken up one of these spots yet again. Surprising. I didn't think this would go this way. I didn't think Goldberg would make WrestleMania, but I guess he has to now, right?
For sure. I mean, he should be at the Elimination Chamber even. I don't know about that. Well, I mean, he should be. He should be wrestling as much as he can on TV so that he can have a halfway decent match at WrestleMania. He should be getting the reps in. He should be getting some practice. I talked about it on Dave and Johnny Live. You know, you look at Chris Jericho, who wrestles pretty often on AEW TV. He's 49 years of age. Bill Goldberg's 53. And you look how bad, I mean, you see how bad he looks on TV compared to Chris Jericho. You know, Jericho's getting practice in. I think if Goldberg had more practice, if Undertaker had more practice, they might be more effective when they show up every once in a while. But when they're totally out of practice, not in ring shape, and they're in their 50s, what do you expect? Yeah, but do you expect Goldberg to wrestle on television? I don't know about that one. Well, no, because that's not how the WWE works. Right? They want to save it for the big one. But... Unfortunately, then when you have your big one, it underwhelms because, you know, Goldberg and Roman Reigns is going to be a terrible match. It's going to be very bad. It should be short. Well, they always should be short. You got, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's another thing. Goldberg has never been a great wrestler. Even in his prime, he wasn't good. And now he's way out of his prime, so you can imagine what it is now. But to be fair, the last time he was at WrestleMania, he had a great match with Brock Lesnar. It was all right. I thought it was the best match we've seen since he came back. Well, it was, you know, a long time coming. It was, a you know, that story went a while. Goldberg beat Brock. Right. It was a good story. Squashed Brock. Shocked Brock. Shocked everybody. And that's why going into this match with The Fiend, I thought, yeah, they might give it to Goldberg here. History because they repeats. do they do crazy stuff. The Fiend won the Universal title in Saudi Arabia. I could see him losing it here. And he did. Well, it's just surprising because, like you said, they put him over Daniel Bryan twice. And put him over The Miz. Put him over like pretty much everyone on SmackDown for him just to lose in Saudi Arabia right before WrestleMania. To Goldberg. It seemed kind of odd, but... How does that make SmackDown look? How does that make everybody look? Nobody could beat The Fiend on SmackDown. None of them were good enough to beat The Fiend, except Roman didn't get a shot. So I That's guess true. Roman is, you know, but pretty much the whole SmackDown roster was like beneath The Fiend, right? Yes. Because nobody's beating Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan's getting beat by The Fiend. So everybody's, you know, on the pecking order. Correct. Everybody's beneath The Fiend. And then here's old man Goldberg comes around, and all of a sudden he can beat The Fiend? So Goldberg now is better than everybody on SmackDown, including Daniel Bryan, according to the WWE's logic, which is insulting to my intelligence. Once again, they're insulting my intelligence. It's offensive to even, you know... And that's why the main roster guys, like, at least if it was Roman beating The Fiend, I'd say, okay, well, it's Roman Reigns. I get it. He's the main guy. He's the top guy. They got to keep building him. He's the Hulk Hogan of the company. He's got to take out The Fiend. But they don't even believe in The Fiend and Roman enough. They don't even believe in their main guys enough to have them sell a match on their own of that magnitude at WrestleMania. What they're telling you is the... The main guys, the guys that are there every week on TV, they're worth very little. The guys you need to pay attention to are the guys that barely show up. Those guys are way more important. When Undertaker shows up, he wrecks AJ Styles at Super Showdown. Didn't have to have a match, just grabbed him in a barely choke slam, and that was it. Wins the Tajiri Trophy. Okay? And then it's you. Not the Tajiri it doesn't trophy. matter what the trophy's called. Okay, John? It doesn't matter. Okay. And then. You have Bill Goldberg come in, never wrestles, very old, shows up, and huffs and puffs, and blows the whole castle down, and down goes Bray Wyatt and The Fiend, and it's all over, right? And then you have Brock Lesnar, barely shows up, in his 40s, just smashing everybody. Ricochet got zero offense in on Brock Lesnar, just total demolition. Then John Cena will come back, you know, and maybe he'll have a match with The Fiend. It'll be Cena's turn to beat The Fiend, too. You know, it's just 
one thing after another where they just bring in the part-timers because they don't believe in the full-timers. At least they don't want you to believe in the full-timers. Ricochet was completely buried in that match with Brock Lesnar. You get no offense in on Brock? No offense? Nothing? Brock was just like, yeah, psh, swat him out of the air. Suplex, suplex, suplex. F5, one, two, three. Let's go home. It made sense, though. Oh, come on. I mean, think about it. If this was a real fight, like, yeah, he wouldn't last like a couple seconds. And he didn't. It made sense. I believed in it. Well, I mean, I bought it, but I was also like, really, this is how you're going to do Ricochet? Because then how does Ricochet walk out on Monday night now? Head down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he's got no credibility. Well, he can rebuild himself. You make these guys just look like buffoons. These guys that show up to work and travel and do the hard work for the WWE are just cannon fodder for these part-time guys that show up. Yes, they are. It's, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. So why am I watching Raw or SmackDown? Because all these guys are jabronis. Every single last one of them is a jabroni. Well, you're watching to see who's going to be one of the breakouts besides Roman and Seth. And well, even Seth. Even Seth. Think about Seth. They did all this for Seth. You know, they had him beat Brock and then beat Brock again. Twice, yes. Only to lose to the Fiend so you could make the Fiend so that the Fiend could lose to Bill Goldberg? And now Seth is a Raw Tag Team Champion. Still main eventing Raw. Yes, Main yes. eventing Raw, but you know, like I was telling you before the show, Kevin Owens is the top babyface on Raw. Yes, but he's nowhere near the top babyface in the WWE right now, heading into WrestleMania season. He's nowhere close to the top. He doesn't have a big match for WrestleMania, and that just shows you that the guys on TV don't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, but- Rusev and Bobby Lashley were like the main story of Raw for months. And now they mean nothing. It's like the TV shows are their own thing. And then the pay-per-views are something else. Sometimes they, you know, relate to each other. Sometimes they make sense. But like Kevin Owens is a top babyface on Raw. Correct? Right. He has nothing going for Mania. Maybe he'll wrestle Seth in a grudge match. I think it's definitely going to happen. Okay. What's wrong with that? Well, he'll lose to Seth, or maybe he'll finally win. I don't know, but, like, it's not. You would think that if you were the top babyface on Raw, you'd be wrestling for the title at WrestleMania. Well, last year, Roman Reigns. Should have won the Rumble. He should have won the Rumble. I mean, if Kevin Owens had won the Royal Rumble, and if Kevin Owens was headed for a WrestleMania match with Brock, I think we'd all be a lot happier with the state of WWE. But because they tried this Drew McIntyre thing, it's kind of like, yeah. And no one really believes in Drew as much as they're trying to push Drew. Like, he's another problem. He's supposed to be the top babyface on Raw, but he's only been a babyface for like four weeks. So... I understand. It's a hard sell. It's a super hard sell. Well, that's the position they put themselves in. That's what they wanted to do. It's they really fault. they put themselves in, in terrible booking positions. It's it's utterly bizarre. Just the fact that Kevin Owens is main eventing every episode of Raw, the top babyface on Raw, the main guy, wrestled Randy in the main event of Raw this week. Like and he's directionless for WrestleMania. It it doesn't connect, you know? It's unfortunate, but you can tell, like, something's going on with Seth. He's going to have a match of some sort with Seth. That's the main thing on Raw right now. And everything else, it's like Randy and Edge. Eventually, that's going to happen too, right? And Brock's doing his thing with Drew. Those are your main things on Raw. And then I guess maybe Ray, Andrade, and whoever for the U.S. title. That's Raw. Yeah. But uh, Kevin Owens... He could easily wrestle Seth on Raw Monday, couldn't he? Like, they don't like each other. They've been feuding. Why not just have a one-on-one match now? What are they waiting for? Like, I don't see that dragging all the way to Mania. 
Well, I think the problem there's is there's no point. They got to get the tag team titles off them if they're going to have one one match. It seems Seth doesn't even wrestle anymore unless it's for the tag team titles because he wrestled at Super Showdown, successfully defended the tag team titles yeah. against the Street Profits. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was what it was. I mean, it wasn't terrible. Great. I felt most of the Super Showdown was just like the matches, they were what they were. It felt like house show pretty much. Yeah. But it wasn't bad. It just. And if you wanted to watch the highlights of the show, it really only took about five minutes. It was Taker, you know, Taker (laughs) chokes Lyman AJ. All right. (laughs) Brock's match with Ricochet, which lasted, let's see here, Brock. What, two minutes? Three? A minute and a half, 90 seconds. 90 second match with Rico. And then Goldberg beating The Fiend in three minutes. Like, your two title matches together were under five minutes. Because your champions don't really work very hard. It's funny. Like, like they get a lot of offense in. They don't really get beat up at all. And then they go home and they don't show up on TV the next night at all. Because, you know, too important. I felt the cage match was really long. It was only 12 minutes, apparently, but felt like that really dragged. It did. Because no one wants to see Roman Reigns wrestle Baron Corbin anymore. Well, it takes too long. The escape the cage stuff, like, they should really maybe get rid of that. You could tell in AEW it worked better without escape the cage. Yeah, I don't know. I think it works either way. I, I think traditional cage matches make sense where you have to escape the cage. I like it. I, I like one or the other. Either do pinfall submission or escape the cage. Don't do both. Because then it just seems mm. like it drags over. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Pick one. Because it just seems like you're doing both and like it drags the whole idea of the match when you're doing both. Yeah, the psychology is off. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. I agree. Uh, I didn't think that match was anything special. Roman beats King Corbin. Uh, Goldberg obviously beat The Fiend to become Universal Champion. Bailey. Uh, beat Naomi. They wrestled Bailey, retaining the uh, SmackDown Championship, and it was the first time women wrestled for a championship in Saudi Arabia. So that was kind of cool. They were wearing, they were all covered up. You know, their whole bodies were covered up, and they were wearing gigantic T-shirts, which Bailey very smartly used against Naomi, tying her her legs up in her own T-shirt to kind of help her. Hit a, a move there to get the fall. I thought it was a very nice finish. Smart smart stuff from Bailey. I like that. Uh, the match itself was, you know, all right. The finish was cool, though. And it's cool that uh, we have another women's match on a Saudi Arabia card. And this time it was a title match. Like, uh, more history. So, good. Just keep it going. Sure. That's, 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 that's good. Uh, Brock beat Ricochet in 90 seconds. Ricochet looked terrible. <laughs> Mansoor beat Dolph Ziegler. Because Mansoor is Saudi Arabian and he gets to wrestle when they go there. The rest of the time he's uh, barely on NXT. If that, what, he was yeah. on the pre-show of NXT, like for the takeover? That's what he was doing, like doing yeah. talking? He's just there because they go to Saudi Arabia and they want a local. Did you see one of those elbows that Ziggler threw and then Monster sold like five seconds afterwards? It's pretty bad. Like Monster is not uh, TV ready. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't even watch the match. Oh, okay. You missed that finish, too. Like, Monster killed him on the finish. Oh, yeah? Moonsault, double knees right to the mm. the chest or the stomach, actually. like oh, Mansoor's just not ready. Well, like, there's a lot of good, but, yeah, not quite ready for TV, I think. Seth and Murphy defeat the Street Profits to retain the Raw Tag Team titles. Angel Garza beat Umberto Carrillo. Miz and Morrison become the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, beating the New Day. Told you that was going to happen. Kofi took a huge bump in that match. I don't know if you saw that. He did his little, like, dive to the outside, but, like, nobody caught him and just, bam, ran the ground. Yeah, well, you're wrestling uh, The Miz, you know? You can't expect him to catch you. No, I, I think he actually planned that because you realize he's losing the tag team titles. Want to make this kind of a yeah big moment. So, yeah, big spots. Um, I like Miz and Morrison as a tag team, though. I think they're good, and I like them... Having the tag team titles now. I think it's a good move. Well, we thought this would happen because we need a change in the SmackDown tag team division because it's always New Day as tag team champions. So we need something to change it up, and Miz and Morrison changes it up. Yeah. Undertaker winds up winning the gauntlet match, the Tuwake trophy. That's right. The jury trophy. (laughs) 
Uh, Undertaker beat AJ Styles. Uh, Andrade, Bobby Lashley, Eric Rowan, and our truth were all in this match. Rey Mysterio was supposed to be in this match, but he got beat up by Anderson and Gallows backstage, and AJ was then celebrating like he had won the match. And then Anderson and Gallows were beat up, and AJ was like, what's going on? And then Undertaker came out and just grabbed him in a choke slam. didn't take off his hat, didn't take off his jacket. I think Taker's hair wasn't long enough, so he was wearing some sort of wig. Probably. Uh, yeah, and he grabs him in the choke slam, lifts him up, loses control of his neck, and then kind of, like, drops him down. Pretty awful. He had to do one move, and he couldn't even hit it properly. And then he winds up winning the whole match, of course, because guys that show up uh, and just hit one move and do very little, they win everything in the WWE, even gauntlet matches, even beating, you know, one of the best wrestlers in the world today, the phenomenal AJ Styles. But this will probably lead to AJ and Taker at WrestleMania. I think AJ maybe beats Taker at Mania. I think AJ is going to be able to have a good match with Undertaker, which is something an Undertaker at this stage in his career is unable to do with most guys. Undertaker needs to be handheld, carried through a match at this stage in his career to make it halfway decent. And AJ Styles is one of those guys who doesn't have a bad match and he'll be able to pull it out from Undertaker. Very few guys in WWE could do it. Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles are pretty much the only guys that I could think of. Rey Mysterio could probably do it too. But Bryan and AJ would be my best picks. And I think AJ Styles is a good move and I like it. I was telling you last week it was going to happen, Big Johnny, and here we are. We're on the road. Well, it, it could be a good match, but it could also be a bad match as well. Yes, AJ Styles usually has the best match, but it doesn't mean he's perfect. He can't have bad matches, and I could see this match, as you could see with the choke slam, it can go horribly wrong quite quickly. So as much as you plan hard and practice hard, you can still screw up. AJ Styles stole the show at a WrestleMania with Shane McMahon. I think he'll be all right with The Undertaker. Yeah, but Shane likes to kill himself. I don't know how much the Undertaker wants to kill himself at this point. You're saying take a vicious beating? You're saying you don't think Undertaker's going to be able to take the beating that Shane took? But it's a different style match. AJ takes the beating here. Yeah, well, He works around Undertaker, you know? He's going to have to do that pretty much for the whole, what, 10 minutes? That's another question, too. How long is this going to be? 10 or 15, I think, will be good. That, that's really hard to ask Taker to go 10, 15 minutes. With AJ Styles, though? He's very good. You know he can do it. He's AJ Styles. He's one of the best wrestlers ever. I'd feel more confident in a tag team match. I thought Taker, when he teamed with Roman, was very good in a tag team where he's in and out. But he's in there the whole time with AJ. I think it's going to be hard. Do you think maybe they do a tag team match with Ray and someone? What, Humberto? And AJ, you know, I don't know. But Rey Mysterio got beat up by there by the OC. And the OC, you know, they're with AJ. Maybe a six-man tag? Actually, besides Umberto, Aleister Black makes sense because he got jumped by the OC. And he kind of fits the Undertaker's kind of gimmick. So yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Aleister Black, Rey Mysterio, and the Undertaker against the OC and AJ Styles at Mania? It's not bad. It might make the match a lot better. I think it would. Uh, I don't know, though. I don't know. I think AJ and Taker could still do something. I'm not sure. I'd kind of rather see Taker AJ one-on-one -on -one than some sort of six-man tag, you know? It's kind of cheap. Right. It's, it's The Undertaker, you know? He shouldn't be in a six-man tag at WrestleMania. It's weird. That chokeslam scares me. I don't know. I think you need to be safe on this. Yeah, that chokeslam was not good. What happened? Well, I think... Because he's trying to make sure the hat doesn't fall off, he was maybe being too careful, and then he just lost them. It seemed kind of windy, too. I don't know if you noticed. Like, everyone's hairs were blowing. Like, uh -huh. it wasn't like Morrison's entrance just alone. I'll tell you what I did notice in the crowd. A lot of, like, chanting? No, a lot of surgical masks. Yeah, I noticed that, too. Coronavirus, buddy. Yeah, well, they were safe. That's good. Serious. Serious but business. WrestleMania will be the same, too, I imagine. You think? I think they should be. Wow. They'll be safe. I don't know. New Japan canceled 
all their events from March 1st to March 15th because of coronavirus. Right. Like and the New Japan Cup was about to start, but now it's not going to start. And there's concern about the Olympics. Yeah. So, yeah. It's kind of scary right now. It is. Uh, all right. That's a downer. But, you know, I noticed that in the crowd. At, uh, you know, it's not something you see in the uh, American crowds, a bunch of people in surgical masks. And we've seen a lot of shows in Saudi Arabia, and they've never had them before. That's right. So seeing that now, you're kind of like, oh, it's it's real out there in the Middle East. You know, Iran has a real problem with it. Maybe Saudi Arabia is having a problem as well. Scary. It's coronavirus thing. All right, Big Johnny, let's uh, take a break here. We'll reset. We'll forget about the coronavirus. We'll talk about some professional wrestling. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got uh, some other stuff to get to. Uh, Randy Orton and Edge. Beth Phoenix is going to show up on Raw Monday night. And Johnny North is going to tell us about when his next wrestling match is going to be, right? Yeah, when is my next wrestling match? Well, I'll find out myself. You think about it. We'll take a little pause for the radio side, and we'll come back and tell you. It's Wrestling Uncensored. Stay with us. You don't know? Thinking about when is the next one. I think it's the 27th or 29th. 29th, I think, yes. And the month, so. Yes. What's the yes for? Ooh. <coughs> Is it Chris Jericho with oh, the bubbly? It comes with a table? It comes with a table and some bubbly. That's cool. Can I show this? This looks cool as hell. I think I can show this. What is this? Look at this. I just get emails for, like, action figures. Look at this cool thing. Hey, Ringside Collectibles, can you send me this, please? I'm promoing it. Oh, look at this cool AEW Jericho action figure, brother. Has the mic. And it comes with all this stuff. The little title, little bottles of bubbly, some sort of food platter. Oh, Jericho likes it, brother. He likes it. Oh, yeah, a little bit of the bubbly. I need this. I need this in my life. These AEW action figures that they uh, are putting out look super awesome. You see those? I see. It looks good. Cody Rhodes. I love it. I want them, Big Johnny. Hook me up, Ringside Collectibles. When do they come out? Uh, August or early July here, the AEW ones. Okay, well, yeah. That probably. bubbly thing, I don't know when that comes out. That looks cool as hell. Mid-July. Special bubbly packaging. Man, this is cool stuff. It's, it's only this series, too. Like, they're not going to make another series until this one, like, sells, I guess. Apparently, they're going to be sold at Walmart, too. Really? Wow, that blows me away. I, I was <laughs> expecting you to go and get this online. Wow. Walmart. Well, Walmart in the States. I don't know about Walmart here, but probably. Hopefully. Wow, States ain't that far away. I'm going to get some of those because, you know, my son, he loves uh, the wrestling toys. Oh, these look good. These look and cool. they look cool, too. I kind of like them, too. You, well, I'm not, yeah. not going to lie. I like them. I enjoy getting them for him. That's why he knows he can always get one out of me because I'm like, yeah. Well. Yeah, you can have one. The thing is, like, yeah, you can have it, but I still want it, too. It's, it's kind of like you both win kind of thing, you know? Yeah, well, he plays with it. I just buy it. I look at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Well, sometimes I play with them, too, but because right. he wants me to play with them. Not because I, I don't do it on my own is what I'm saying. No, you can if you want. I mean, why not? You get a table? It'd be a bit weird. It'd be a bit weird. I don't really want. Also, I don't want. I want to see how the table breaks. I don't have the need to play with toys in that way. Okay. I do it because he demands that I do it. Ah, okay. Yeah. He's the boss. Yeah, come play with my wrestlers. Okay, okay. Take it easy, dude. Take it easy. He's wild, man. Well, it's your fault. <laughs> what do you mean it's my fault? It's genetic. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. All right, Big Johnny. We have to tell everybody about our friends over at... Before you say that, doesn't Jericho kind of look like Christian a little bit right there? In the action figure? Yeah. yeah a little bit. Why are you stopping me? I just like just came to mind right there. I'm like, kind of looks like Christian. Um, they were a tag team, by the way, as well. Champions on Raw, I think. 
Jericho and uh, Christian. Yeah. yeah, they had a nice course. little run. They had WrestleMania match. Of course. Too. Uh, all right, IP Vanish. You need a VPN when you're going on the internet. Go to IP Vanish. What you need to do right now is go to vpn.ringsidereport.net. If you're using public Wi-Fi anywhere, using your phone on a public internet, you need to be protected. You could totally get hacked. Protect yourself on the internet. Get yourself a VPN. Go to vpn.ringsidereport.net. vpn.ringsidereport.net right now. Sign up. You can sign up for as low as $3.99 a month with a one-year plan for IP Vanish vpn.ringsidereport.net to let VPN or IP Vanish know that we sent you and uh, it'll help us produce more content for the show. So, thank you. Keep supporting IP Vanish. We appreciate all of you that have done it already. Keep going. vpn.ringsidereport.net Yes, thanks again for the people who have already supported this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's how we're able to provide more content for you. We've got the AEW Revolution preview up on Dave and Johnny Live this week. You could watch that on the YouTube channel. You could also check out the AEW Watch Along for Revolution, which uh, you'll be able to check out tonight or depending on when you're watching this. You know, maybe it's already happening. During AEW Revolution, Saturday, February 29th, this show is going to come out Saturday morning on the YouTube channel. So... You know, if you're listening to this Saturday morning, well, then our show is tonight. If you're listening to this Saturday night or Sunday morning or Monday or Tuesday or some other day. I don't know what day of the week you're listening to this. All right. I don't know. What what day of the week is it for you? Is it Wednesday? Hope you're having a good Wednesday. If you're already at Sunday, everything's already there. Yeah. If you're on Sunday, you're good. Just go back. We're right there. Go back a day. Everything's there. Everything. Go to Stitcher. Stitcher Premium is a fantastic service. Great audio. We have our podcast over on Stitcher, Wrestling Uncensored, Ringside Report MMA. Stitcher offering you the Wrestling Uncensored universe as part of the sponsorship of our work. A special offer on the premium version of Stitcher. Now, besides all of our shows, you can listen to over 100,000 different podcasts on your iPhone, Android, tablet, PC, Amazon Echo device, or in your car, on demand, ad-free with Stitcher Premium. Also access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, comedy albums, and more. It's just $4.99 a month or $34.99 per year. What you want to do is go to stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Stitcher.com slash premium premium and you use the promo code ringside to get a free month of stitcher premium stitcher.com slash premium promo code ringside for a free month and keep supporting the ringside report network yes keep supporting us please (laughs) please and thank you (laughs) uh all right and you can also do super chat here on this video right now thank you for hooking us up with all the super chat we appreciate it Donate.ringsidereport.net. You can also hook us up. Keep, uh, you know, giving us a little bit so we can keep on going and keep buying the pay-per-views to keep watching, you know. We're going to talk about the WWE maybe charging us more for pay-per-views. They just up my WWE network be free by two bucks a month for some reason. They're getting you. Yeah, in April it's going to go up by two bucks. Apparently the WWE is asking for more money. So the cable company is like, yeah, WWE is charging us more. So we have to charge two bucks extra for everybody that's subscribing to the WWE Network. So instead of, you know, 12 or 13 bucks, it's going to be like 15 bucks a month for WWE Network. And now they're talking about taking the pay-per-views off the WWE Network and making me pay extra for the pay-per-views. Well, then I'm going to cancel the WWE Network. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Because I can't afford all these things. But, you know, I need to afford all these things because I need to watch these things so I can do these shows. So what am I supposed to do? That's where you come in. I need your help. All right? We need your help so we can keep paying our cable bills, keep buying the pay-per-views so we can stay informed, so we can watch these pay-per-views, watch the UFC, watch AEW Revolution. I haven't even bought this thing yet. I don't know how much this thing's going to cost. we got to buy AEW Revolution. we got to watch this thing. And with your support, you know, we'll be able to keep doing it without your support. I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be rough. Could be a little. Could be a little rough, Ski John. We need support. Thank you. We love you big time. Uh, what do we got? 
Um, Let's get back to it. We you want to get back to the show? Yeah, you want to get great. back to the radio uh, radio version of the show? To We're the, on radio stations all across the country. I mean, in two different provinces, but hey, it's uh, across two provinces. You, Quebec and Ontario, baby. You can listen to it across the world if you want. Yeah, on the internet, yeah. ringsidereport.net. You better believe it, baby. All right, let's get back into it. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon. Johnny North is here. Ringsidereport.net is the website. Go there. Check us out. Everything we do available on our website. Dave and Johnny Live. We previewed AEW Revolution. You could watch our AEW Revolution watch along. You could watch Ringside Report MMA. Do you know who Fred Garcia is? Well, find out at ringsidereport.net. Fred Garcia is a fantastic guy. He knows a lot about MMA. He's a jiu-jitsu blue belt. And he's a savage. So go check him out. Also, AJ, Ringside Report, live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on the YouTube channel and online at ringsidereport.net. Thursday on the YouTube channel. Oh, did I say Wednesday? Yeah. Sorry. I got Wednesday on the brain. I was trying to figure out, you know, what day of the week people were listening to the show and so on. Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Sorry. You were on? Thursday, 8 p.m. I get, you know, we're on so much, John, sometimes I get lost. You've done Wednesdays in the past. That's why I think. Huh? You've done Wednesday specials. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well, we're on all the time. You know, we got Dave and Johnny live. We've got Wrestling Uncensored. I talk to the TSN Morning Show every uh, every Friday at 9 a.m. I talk to the, the boys out in Peterborough on Extra uh, every Thursday at about 1045. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not just the shows. There's, you know, different... Uh, Radio stations you got to hit and talk to. Keep everybody informed. And I was asked a very good question uh, in uh, Peterborough this week. It was a question from uh, our, my man Graham there out in Peterborough. Uh, I talked to him weekly about professional wrestling. And he was talking to me about the WWE Network and possible changes to the pay structure of the WWE network and rumors that the WWE may indeed sell the pay-per-view rights to some, if not all of their pay-per-views to a service like ESPN plus or DAZN, something that the UFC has done, something that a lot of people are getting into. The UFC sold their pay-per-view rights to ESPN plus, which means that if you want to buy a UFC pay-per-view in the United States, you have to be a subscriber to ESPN+. Plus. You have to pay ESPN 5 bucks a month just for the privilege of then ordering a pay-per-view for $65. It's kind of crazy. It's bananas, right? So that's what the UFC did. Thankfully, there's no ESPN Plus in Canada, so it hasn't affected me. I still get the pay-per-views the old school way, pay-per-view style. But I'm used to that with the UFC, and I get it. It's the cost of doing business. I was used to that with the WWE until a few years ago when they introduced the WWE Network and they gave me all their pay-per-views and everything for $9.99. Remember that? Remember when they kept saying $9.99, $9.99? I remember $9.99. It's now like $14.99, okay? It's not $9.99 anymore, Triple H, okay? But nevertheless, I'm still paying for it because I think that it's worth 15 bucks a month to get, say, Super Showdown. It wasn't the greatest show, but I'm willing to pay 15 bucks for that and the R-Truth documentary that came on after it, not to mention the Ruthless Aggression series that they did this month. I think the 15 bucks or whatever it is this month was well spent for me. I got no problems with that, okay? They gave me good content. Next month, they're going to give me WrestleMania, you know, Elimination Chamber, whatever. I'm happy with that. But... At this point, 15 bucks is all I want to spend. I'm not spending any more money on Super Showdown. I'm not spending more than 15 bucks on Super Showdown. And if the WWE wants to go back to the way they used to do things, if they want to go back to a pay-per-view model, they are going to need to really check themselves because no one will buy this thing. No one will buy Elimination Chamber if it's 50 bucks. No. I mean, the illegal streamers will be living it up. Everybody that's going to – no, everybody <laughs> will steal this thing. Every single person that watches Elimination Chamber, if you have to pay 50 bucks for it, 
everybody's going to be stealing it. One guy will pay for it, and then everybody else will watch that guy's feed. Well, or a couple guys, because WWE will take that guy's feed down. But then another guy in some country where the WWE can't access them, that, that feed will go up and we'll be all good. And, and you and me... We'll be watching the WWE pay-per-view for free because no one in their right mind is going to pay $50 to watch a second-rate WWE pay-per-view. No one's going to pay 50 bucks to watch Super Showdown or Elimination Chamber or Bash at the Beach or Hell in a Cell or Money in the Bank or TLC or any of these second-rate shows. WrestleMania, maybe, maybe. But even then, because I'm used to not paying for it, I'm not going to be happy about it. Okay, they could maybe get away with charging people pay-per-view prices for Mania and the Rumble. And if you really book it well, SummerSlam. But that's about it. See, that's what I felt it always was. Wasn't it always 50 bucks for like WrestleMania, SummerSlam? But the other kind of pay-per-views, the lower ones... Were like twenty nine ninety nine. No, no, no. They were still like forty bucks at least. They were. Oh yeah. They were about the same when they stopped being on pay per view. They were roughly the same, and then they would just jack up the price for Mania. Like the pay per views were like forty five or fifty bucks, and then Mania and and SummerSlam were like sixty or seventy bucks. Okay. They used to charge you more if you wanted it in high definition. I was like, get out of here, man. Yeah, I wasn't counting the high def because that was like, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, they charge you more, like extra 10 bucks to see it nicely. Come on, WWE. Do not go back to the old pay-per-view system. I don't know what you got to do to make the network better. Well, I mean, I have many ideas to make the network better. There are many different shows that you could put on. It's all about the original content for me and the the lack of it. You know, they just don't produce enough good original content. And it's very easy. Have wrestlers talk about their matches. Just have wrestlers go on there and uh, produce more table for three. Well, um, you know, produce more table for threes. That's easy. That's a good show. But do it with people that, you know, you actually want to see. Have uh, a, a rivalry series where you have guys sit down and talk about their matches. Give me Steve Austin and Bret Hart watching their WrestleMania match and talking about it. Give me that show. Give me guys, two guys, two wrestlers that had a great match, sit down, and they watch it together, and you watch it with them. Do a watch-along for the match on the WWE Network. You call it WWE Legend Watch-Along. There's one idea for a show. Like, there are so many easy ideas for the WWE Network that they're just not doing. There's a million missed opportunities, and it's it's very, very disappointing, you know, because I think that it would be easy to make the WWE Network something that you, you're you always watching, but as a wrestling fan, you know, I watch it once in a while. Like, they could produce, like, the R-Truth documentary I thought was really good, you know? Okay. Things like that I think are really good. The, the Ruthless Aggression documentary, it wasn't historically accurate, but it was entertaining. I enjoyed watching it, but... Those things are few and far between. I feel like they don't produce enough of that content. And they have the ability. They have the money. They have the the people. They have the talent that, that's willing to talk, you know? And they don't do it. They don't do enough of it. They have one podcast on the network, the Stone Cold Podcast. And that kind of, you know, it was there for a while and now it's back. But you have a new episode maybe every month or a couple of months. You could do more. Whatever happened to Bruce Pritchard's show on the network? Something to wrestle with Conrad. They stopped doing that? You know, like, that's another thing with the network. They start things, and then they stop them. Well, if you want people to buy the network, give us more content. Also, make your pay-per-views better. I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? But I think the content on the network is lacking. Well, there's a huge problem with that. Like, there's many problems that you just kind of stayed with all the shows. One with the the Conrad and Bruce Pritchard. Conrad does other shows where people aren't in WWE, so I don't think they want to promote Conrad whatsoever. They don't mind that Bruce does his show, but the fact that he does his show this is like a miracle in itself, actually. The fact that WWE even allows that. They're not going to put that on the network, though. It's because that kind of almost promotes AEW in a sense. Okay. Well, 
I would like the WWE Network to be a little bit more real. Like that Ruthless Aggression documentary. It was not accurate. There was a lot of things that were just wrong. I would like to see a more realistic perspective. And they just they shy away from that. They shy away from anything that's not WWE edict, you know? Well, they won, right? So they get to decide how things are told. That's what happens when you win. Mm -hmm. When you're on charge or right. you're on top, you do what you want. Sure, and they can do that all they want, but don't you think that they have enough uh, personalities in their history to do more kind of talk show style things that would be entertaining on the network? Like, don't you think that there are easy fixes, you know, panel shows, Legends House? What's wrong with Legends House? That was fun. They did one. They did one series of Legends House. A lot of the guys that are on the show are dead now. Like, I mean, it was so long ago. Sadly, yes. Why wouldn't you do another one? Why wouldn't you do uh, something like that? It's like a superstar reality show. They're in a competition. Uh, they have to get points, you know? Superstar Ninja Warrior. Uh, superstar Bachelor. You have... Uh, one lucky lady and five single former WWE superstars trying to find the love of their life. I don't know, man. There's a lot of funny ideas. And the WWE Network seems to be the place where you could do some of those fun ideas. And I feel like there are so many ex-wrestlers that would love the paycheck and love the spotlight. I think the You have the channel. You have the ability. You have the people that want to do it. You have, I think, enough people that would watch it. It's tough, though, because you have, like, over nine hours of original content, not even on the WWE Network, that everyone watches every week. Marty Jannetty on the town. Yeah, the, I don't know if you Have can, you seen his Twitter? Yeah, I, I imagine it would be too crazy. They, they wouldn't do that kind of stuff. It's PG. You only air it uh, at a certain time, and you have it, you know, in a certain section on the network. They have ECW for that. Yeah. So, if you can put ECW stuff, you couldn't do an edited Marty Jannetty reality show. Where's Marty? You know? Six episode docu-series on what happened to Marty Jannetty. They got, they're too busy doing other shows right now. Original content every week. It's kind of tough. Well, hire some other people. Hire a different staff to produce more content for the network. What I'm saying is... I don't think they're putting enough resources into that channel. Well, they do have a other staff just for the network, and they are doing well, it. What are they doing? They're doing it, but it's just there's only yeah. so much they could do. Well, I guess there's only so much they can do. There's only so much in their budget, and there's only so right. much the WWE wants. I'm saying the WWE isn't investing enough in their network. You go to the original content section of the network. I don't need to see matches I've seen before. Okay? I've seen the matches. Okay. I see the pay-per-views. What else am I looking for on the network? Original content about wrestling. And when I go there, there's not a lot of new stuff. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah, they need to fix that. <laughs> they do. All right. What else is going on in WWE? Randy Orton is feuding with Edge. Kind of. He's been... I mean, he took Edge out, right? Edge showed up in the Royal Rumble, and then the next night, Randy Orton attacked him. And Randy Orton says he's sorry, and Randy Orton, you know, doesn't want to really explain why he attacked Edge, and that's the story. So, Matt Hardy came out a few times. Randy Orton beat him up. Matt Hardy wanted answers. Randy's not giving answers. Kevin Owens comes out this week. He also wants answers. Randy's not giving answers. Um, Randy and, uh, Kevin Owens have a match. Randy actually wins after a fast count from a referee who was then found to be wearing a Seth Rollins shirt underneath his referee shirt. Kevin Owens discovered this after the referee had taken a chair away from him that he was going to use on Randy when Randy had a chair too. Right? Right. Seth is at ringside. Seth was ringside. What's with the heel ref? Because they really just want to focus on Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins. It kind of consumes Kevin Owens. No matter what he does, he's always stuck with Seth Rollins. 
So this referee is like a Seth Rollins fan. He believes in the Monday Night Messiah. He's a worshiper of Seth. Plus, they're in Canada, so we always got to work in a screw job of some kind. So yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if that was the angle they were going for. Maybe. It was super weird. It didn't really work for me. I I don't think that they're going to continue it either. Like, will we ever see that fast count ref again? No, I could see the ref being used again. Sure, it makes sense. He'll be like the ref in the Seth and Kevin match. You could see a ref get bummed and that ref comes out. And everyone's like, oh, no, not that ref. Though they never name these referees anymore, so it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And so Randy wins here, and Randy next week, I guess we'll have some sort of confrontation with Beth Phoenix because she's going to be on Raw Monday night. And apparently Edge might be in the building too, so. Oh, on this day, I see Edge. Maybe. We'll wait and see. Maybe. No, no Edge. I mean, Randy. Will, will Randy tease an RKO on Beth and Edge come out to make the save? Well, let's remember what Randy did to uh, Triple H and Stephanie. Randy's, he uh, punted Stephanie in the head, kicked her in the head, while Triple H watched, handcuffed. Remember that? Remember Triple H's terrible acting? No! Uh, 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 Stephanie! Uh, uh. I remember that. I can't forget it. It was ridiculous. Did he have the chops back then, too? I don't remember. I think he had that. the chops, which made it more ridiculous, because he had like this weird facial hair, and he was like crying. It's like this big blubbering chop walrus. I thought he punted Vince, actually. I thought he gave the DET to Stephanie. Whatever. He punted. Didn't he hit uh, Linda, too? Oh, he hit all the McMahons, He, I like, guess. attacked all the McMahons, and Triple H was there to defend their honor. Well, yeah, it made sense. Uh, it was terrible. Bad, bad match, but. Was that the story where Triple H went to Randy's house? Yeah. Home invasion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was so bad. No, what was bad in the match was that... The match was bad, too, at WrestleMania. Yeah. That was terrible. But the stipulation for the match was the worst. Because, like, it's no DQ, but if Triple H tries anything, he gets disqualified, but Randy can do anything. It was just so stupid. Like, uh, and Triple H still won. True, of course. <laughs> this isn't The Fiend here, like, wrestling. Of course he's going to win Triple H. <laughs> and that match, I remember, was really bad, but also... Not only was it bad, but it came after, like, Sean and Taker. I think that happened earlier in the night, but yes. Not right after. But okay. Like, was it Sean and Taker, or was it Flair and Sean? It was uh, Taker and, and Sean. Taker and Sean. And it was like, whew. Taker and Sean should have made invented. A Triple H-Randy match was awful. But I'm sure when the WWE does a documentary on it, they'll be like, it was one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history. Triple H, once again, victorious. Well, I expect uh, Randy Orton and Edge will have a much better match. I hope so. They, they've they had better matches in the past, so. I'd like to see Edge show up uh, on Raw Monday night. It would be nice. But his wife, Beth Phoenix, will be there to give some sort of update on his health. What happens with Edge after the Randy thing? Like... Do you think it'll end a mania with Randy where he beats Randy and then that's it? He moves on to do other things or does he stick around with Randy for a bit? He signed a three-year deal. He did. So he might do another match with Randy, but maybe move on. He'll wrestle a bunch of times. I know it just seems like this is like a one-off, but no, I think he's here for the long haul, which is good. Do you think during the next three years... Edge will become WWE champion? Or Universal. Yes. You think he will? Yes. I think he really should because he's what, 48? Uh, I don't think he's that old, but... No, I think he's about 48. He's, uh, come on, man. Edge? He started very young. Uh, yeah, but he quit wrestling like nine years ago. Oh, he's 46 only. Wow. So, okay. Edge is 46. He just signed a three-year deal with WWE. Looks great, too, for 46. How come he's not the universal champion right now? Because that's not the storyline. Yeah, but... <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> Goldberg, Edge. Edge, Goldberg. I mean, 
Someone doesn't see it the way you see it. I mean, <laughs> excuse me? We're wondering, you know, if he maybe be, become champion, if he's going to beat Randy. It's like, he's edge, man. He's so much better than Goldberg in every way, yet Goldberg comes in and just squashes the Fiend. Like, it's weird. It's almost like if you want to wrestle for the WWE full-time, they kind of look down on you. Like, if you want to show up, if you're a legend and you come back from retirement after three or four years, like Daniel Bryan or nine years or whatever it's been with Edge, if you want to come back, well, we're going to treat you like a star, but like not too big of a star. If you want to come back full time, if you work really hard because you love professional wrestling so much that you don't listen to the doctors and you're willing to risk your health and fight and struggle to one day get physically able to come back and work a full schedule once again, or at least, you know, a regular TV and pay-per-view schedule for the WWE. Yeah, well, they don't really respect that. What they respect is you sitting on your couch and then once in a while being so nice as to show up and win a championship. That's what they like. They don't want you to care about the business. They don't want you to fight back from retirement and work on TV every week like Edge and Daniel Bryan. I mean, whatever. Who cares about that? Who cares that Matt Hardy was super over when the WWE got him, that he's a living legend in pro wrestling, that he's a future Hall of Famer, and they just turned him into a total jabroni while they had him? Who cares? Because Matt Hardy... Oh, whatever, Matt Hardy. What we really care about is is Goldberg, who shows up every once in a while and was really never good to begin with. Or or Brock Lesnar, who is really quite lazy, who doesn't take any kind of bumps, who, you know, he is kind of fun. I'll admit he's kind of fun. But let's be honest, Brock doesn't work very hard, and it's not very respectable what he's doing in the WWE. Undertaker, same deal at this point. He's just collecting a paycheck because he knows that he can but these other guys that you know care and put their body on the line every single week whatever forget about them what kind of message is that sending it's it's really weird it's really weird the way they're acting the way they treat their part-timers is so much better like if i was edge i would say i'll come back but only as a part-timer well, he kind of is part-time, isn't he? Like, Yeah, but, you know, if he comes back and start, Like, if he wrestles on Raw... Right. Bad move. Probably. I yeah. mean, good for us. Dumb for him. Because if he doesn't wrestle on Raw, I mean, he could be champion. He could be booked uh, at the top of the card. Like, I wonder, is Edge making as much as Brock? I don't think so. I think Brock's still making the most. Is he making anywhere near? Is Edge making as much as Goldberg? Hmm, that's a good question. I think he should be. I don't know about that. Because Goldberg is like a bigger star? Is he, though? Is he? Who's more beloved by WWE fans? Who do people actually like? Who do people actually pay to see? Who do you tune in to see? I tune in to see Edge. I I am more interested in seeing Edge than Bill Goldberg every single day. Twice on Sunday, brother. I understand that, but that's not the way they look at it pretty much, sadly. Well, what's their problem? They, they see Goldberg as like one of the top stars ever in wrestling. And Edge, you know, he was a great star, great hand, but that's pretty much it. Daniel Bryan. You know, B+. Plus. <laughs> it's true. Like, <laughs> that's the storyline they wrote. Hey, Daniel Bryan got his reign as champion. His comeback reign, he was the environmental champion. He got to do it, but it got cut short. It's unfortunate, but he had something. And I imagine Edge will get something as well. But Edge should play it smart because the way it works right now, it seems, 
is the less you're there, the more over you are. But it's true. You know, you know, it's one thing when it's Brock. It's 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 one thing when it's the Undertaker because those guys, they are who they are, and they've earned it to a certain level. Bill Goldberg. No. No, I don't accept Bill Goldberg. I never have. I never will. He hasn't earned it. He doesn't deserve it. No. I don't want to see him taking these spots. I don't want to see him at the top of the card. I don't want to see him ending the reign of the Fiend, the Fiend, a guy who mopped the floor with Daniel Bryan. The Fiend, the guy who took the title from Seth Rollins. These are the guys that WWE should be building in the build-up to WrestleMania. Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan should be figured more prominently into the WrestleMania plans than Bill Goldberg and The Undertaker in 2020. That's not a ridiculous statement. That's highly logical. WWE has lost their way. Vince McMahon... Come on, pal. What is going on? What is going on? They're stuck in the past, pretty much. They go back to what worked instead of what could work now. Ancient history at this point. It's ridiculous. Like, this is... it. Is, like, honestly, Brock, he is what he is. He's effective. He's still in his early 40s. You know, I get it. Okay, I get Brock. Undertaker... The guy's a living legend. He's done a lot for the company. You want to give him a payday? Okay. He's still a, he's, he was a great wrestler. Brock has the ability to be a great wrestler. Undertaker has the ability to be a great wrestler. Goldberg has never had that ability. Well, he was just, you know, a spot kind of guy. Like he had his move set and that was it. He was an entrance and a couple of stiff spears and that was it. A leg lock. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. He's a pretend tough guy. The it, big phony, Bill Goldberg. He believed it, so it worked. Yeah, he believed it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe Bill Goldberg, okay? Ridiculous. Well, the important part is WWE believes it, and they're running with it all the way to Mania. And whether you like it or not, that's going to main event the show. Uh, I think uh, Brock and Drew will main event the show. Really? Oh, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe it will be Goldberg and Roman because it's Roman. Right. It'll be Roman's crowning achievement beating Goldberg. Like Drew, it's kind of a test kind of with Drew, I find. So I don't know if that's main event. Maybe like for halfway through the show. I'm starting to think Brock's going to beat Drew. I don't know. I think you give it to Drew because, I mean, if you're ever going to give it to Drew. Are you really going to have two of those crowning moments, though? You know, like Drew and Roman both get the, you know? Kofi got it last year. And Seth got it last year, too. Yeah, okay. You can do it. As long as you separate them, they're fine. I feel like Brock still might beat Drew, though. I'm not convinced that Drew McIntyre is going to win. I'm not even convinced Roman Reigns is going to be the universal champion at this point. Who knows? Wow, Goldberg's going to beat Roman? Wow. Uh, they might do Cena Goldberg. They might do a little switcheroo. You never know. We'll see. We'll see. You can't see me. Johnny North, next match. What can people see you in the ring? It'll be March 29th, Sunday, 2 p.m., 4325 Industrial Boulevard. It'll be at the Torture Chamber Dojo. And bell time, 2 p.m. Tickets, $10. All right. For more info on that, you can check them out at North Genesis on Twitter, Genesis Johnny North on Instagram. You can follow me on all the things at Dave Simon MMA. RingsideReport.net is our website. Go there. Check out our AEW Revolution preview. Check out our AEW Revolution watch along over at Ringside Report. Dot net and on the YouTube channel. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you subscribe. If you're listening to us on the radio, you can watch this show on our YouTube channel and on our website at ringsidereport.net. You can listen to us as a podcast as well on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, all the things. Go listen to us, subscribe, 
leave a comment, leave a five-star review. It helps with algorithms and so on. Thank you to everybody helping us out on the radio side, and a big thanks to you for listening and watching. For Johnny North, I am Dave Simon, and this has been Wrestling Uncensored. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you.